Hey everyone, welcome to my Giga Brain guide for Proxy Singed, where my IQ matches my ELO. <laughs> uh, for this guide, I'll be teaching using footage from a game I played in Master Tier promos, which is like basically ELO Heaven, <laughs> but not really. Um, I'll be covering why you proxy, like when you proxy, which matchups you want to proxy against, you know, when you look at both enemy top lane and enemy jungle. Um, some tips on how to track the enemy jungler, and I'll be sharing some just general thoughts on the strengths of proxy and how proxy should be used as a tool in your toolkit for Singed. But before we get into that, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. That's right guys, this month is Raid Shadow Legends 2nd, which is just the right number. 2nd Anniversary. Raid Shadow Legends is the turn-based, dark fantasy RPG game that you need in your life. Raid features a mix of PvE and PvP game modes that's played on PC and mobile devices. There's over 300 different champions to choose from, all of which are upgradable and customizable. You can choose whatever type of champion fits you the best before customizing your party and sending them to battle. You can explore loads of champion combinations and master countless tactics as you take on raid bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles, and PvP arena matches. Hop on and join a clan! You can also get ready for six straight weeks of anniversary events and tournaments. They're even launching their first ever clan vs clan tournament and the new Shadowkin faction. Hit the link in the description to get a huge head start with the free epic champion Yotun, 100k silver, 50 gems, and 3 ancient shards so you can summon awesome champions. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. Alright guys, let's go ahead and get right into it. So this game I played in master promos d1 slash master promos on this account um so pretty high elo game the things i want to illustrate right off the bat is that or want to want to emphasize right off the bat is that one you know proxying is a tool in singe's toolkit that you use to have game impact it is not something that you should do every single game you don't want to proxy every game you don't want to proxy blindly right you have to look for the right situation to proxy so that you can get an advantage in the game that you're playing the best Singed players will proxy and lane. You have to know how to do both. You you can't just only proxy and you can't just only lane because if you can if you can't do both, then you're not one in my opinion using the full value of Singed kit, and two, you're going to be stuck in situations that you don't know how to like uh, adapt and improvise and overcome basically. So that being said, it is a tool in Singed toolkit that you need to pull out when you need to use it. That being said, you know, Minish Cap, when do I use it? How do I use it? Why do I use it? So what you want to do uh, when you're when, when you're looking at the enemy team comps to decide whether or not you need a proxy, and you do this every single game, by the way, is one, your lane matchup, and two, the jungle matchup, okay? So when you're looking at your lane matchup, you want to proxy when the lane is something that you can't kill in lane, that you can't get an advantage over through traditional laning, which is much safer, or it is... Uh, something that is going to kill you and very hard to lane against and you're going to lose too much CS laning normally as Singed. So in this case, I'm laning versus Malphite and Malphite's a matchup. I can't kill him. He's going to poke me out with his uh, with his Q comment combo. So I want like to proxy here because I, I can't solo kill him. I can't get an advantage by laning versus the Malphite. Um, other, other matchups that you want to proxy against are ones that are going to bully you a lot. So the range matchups, big ones, Urgot, Gnar, um, you know, Gangplank, uh, the vein top lane stuff like that because you're gonna lose too much cs laning traditionally versus them you look to proxy right but matchups that you don't want to proxy you know like your renektons your jaxes um what else like any melee matchup that's not darius or fiora you should be able to lane normally versus them um that being said so what do you do you know if you're laning normally and you push them into their tower and you can't solo kill them well, then you can look to proxy, right? But it is not something you should do blindly every game and you want to look for the correct matchup to do it in. Now, jungle matchup is the second thing you look for. What types of junglers do you want to proxy against? You want to, you want to proxy versus junglers that have a hard time killing you when you're behind tower. Karthus, great example, right? He doesn't have hard CC. He has a hard time killing Singe behind tower because you can just focus on like non-stop juking the Qs and just run away, right? Um, certain junglers you want to avoid proxying against, things like, things that can gank you really easily over walls, like Rek'Sai, uh, Lee Sin, you want to avoid things that have, like, really good hard CC, 
can be hard to hard to proxy against. Things that you can things that are in meta that you can proxy against is like Kha'Zix you can proxy against because he has like a lack of hard CC. Graves, lack of hard CC. Um Lilia, lack of hard CC. You can proxy against those champions because you have an easier time running away from them. But versus like junglers that can gank you over walls through fog of war that have hard CC, try to avoid it. Alright, now this is a master tier promo game. It is, so we're not looking for the level one proxy. It's very risky to look for that. What you can do, however, um, if you if you can't find level one proxy, is you can go ahead and just start shoving the wave from level one, which is what I do here. Wait for him to walk in the lane, and then once we uh, decide that the jungler is not starting topside, we just go ahead and start pushing the wave level one. I have a uh, dark seal here, level one, so I have 33 AP, and just shove, shove, shove. And we auto attack him a bit. We auto attack him there on the trade to uh, force him back under tower. Then I just walk through, take a tower shot because he's trying to freeze the lane on us, but it's fine. One tower shot's not that big of a deal. I dump my potion charges here, both of them, to make sure I have health, and then I start proxying the wave back here. Level two. Now I'm going to go ahead and ward for the Karthus. Ward it up. Then I walk back up here and I try and grab as many of the, the minion waves as I can, or minions from the wave, sorry. I miss one, but that's okay. Sometimes it's not perfect, then I just start farming this up. So I see Malphite right here. Let me just illustrate this. So I see Malphite right here. He's running straight at me, right? That means I assume the jungler is probably close by because they're never going to run right at you unless the jungler is there. Usually. That, that's, that's like that's like the rule you can live by when you're proxying is the only time the enemy top laner just runs straight at you like that is when jungler is there. Um, and in this case, I was right. Jungler was there. So I walk under tower and execute. Um, sometimes they will walk at you to harass you, but if if you have a suspicion that the jungler is going to be there, so in Karthus's case, he clears jungle very fast and just like runs at you, uh, runs towards top to try and kill you. Yeah, in this case, jungler was there, so successfully avoided it by executing. Now, what did I buy? I bought a pair of boots, and I think I go Doran's ring here as well for the proxy. In this situation, for the proxy, I'm running double mobility summoners as well. Ends up being super, ends up working out super well with the aftershock. Um, we're looking to wait and shove the next creep wave in so we can get around the tower and proxy some more here. Again, because we just have a hard time solo killing Malphite because <clears throat> he just he has a lot of um, a lot of poke and he can be under his tower like pretty healthily. And so even if you like have him near your tower, like there's no guarantee your jungler comes. So <clears throat> matchups where you have a hard time all lending them. That's when you look for it. Now I see uh, I think I see Karthus down bot here. But I'm walking behind tower to look for the proxy. Doing pretty fine here. I'm assuming Karthus is not topside anymore because he would have cleared the top side by now. Okay, so now we see Karthus mid. He just poked his head out there. Then go ahead and keep proxying it. Just looking to farm, maintain money. Sorry. Right there, I'm poking my head in to look for the uh, look for the Karthus, and he's not there. So go back in for one more wave. Right now, I'm ahead of the Malphite in CS, even though I've recalled, and he's been stuck under his tower the whole game. Super good. Look for the next wave here, and now I'm out of mana, so I can't continue proxying, so we're going to go ahead and back. Yep, there we go. We're backing. Alright, now I'm out of Doran's Ring, so I have mana sustain as well. In this case, I did not wait to leave the fountain until I was full mana, because I have a Doran's Ring and get my mana back from farming minions, right? Um, so instead of waiting for full mana in the fountain, I just went ahead and walked out when I was about 60% mana and regen a little bit of it as I go to lane. Then I just use the minion wave to like kind of get my mana back. And that way I'm just maintaining a little bit of pressure where I normally wouldn't be able to. Get to lane a little bit faster before Malphite. See, Malphite's still back here. And because I did that, because I left the fountain early, I'm actually able to like push this wave before it, uh... <clears throat> got to lane, and then the next wave met right under tower instead of freezing against me, which I would have done if I had left a little bit later, it would have frozen against me. Getting poke in the Malphite here. Go for the cannon. Now we look for the proxy again. At this point, I don't know where Karthus is, so I'm being very careful. Because he could be anywhere. I think I hit level 6 soon. Yeah, I hit level 6 soon. So now, I see Karthus here, and as soon as I see Karthus, I know Malphite's walking over, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop my uh, pop my ultimate, pop my ghost as soon as I hit 6, flash away from their all-in, and I just run away. So the, Mal the Karthus actually drops super low, um, and at this point, I actually just, uh, I think I just recall, yeah, I just recall. So the reason why um, I ran away as soon as I saw Karthus was because the only reason Karthus would poke his head out at me there, the only reason he would show 
is if they wanted to go for a kill. Because for Karthus, it's not worth it for him to spend time fighting it when he could be power farming. Um, he's, he's not a jungler that's good at ganking proxy Singe, so it's never ever worth it for him to, to try and kill me, right? So, only reason they do that is if they both went all in, so I predicted that, and as soon as I hit 6, pop the R, pop the Flash, Ghost, Aftershock, everything, and just run away. Now Malphite's ult is down, so he's much less of a threat if he decides to DP to his, uh, to his team. I bought Swiftness Boots here, look for the proxy, they have a good amount of slows, Malphite's slow, Karthus slow. Um, I think Galio, does he have a slow as well? I'm not super sure. I think when you get taunted, it slows you, but I'm not, I'm, I don't know for sure. But Swiftness Boots also great when you're proxying, obviously, it gives you movement speed. And that is very, very big for Singe, movement speed plus 60. Let's run the lane faster. Using Demolish while you're proxying, by the way, is awesome because it lets you snipe tower plates where you normally wouldn't be able to because you're not starting with a whole ton of AP. Okay, hey, right there we saw we saw that Karthus took Dragon, so I know Karthus isn't here, which means I can go behind tower for uh, between T2 and T3. Now I'm just farming back here. No big deal. Now this game, the Zillion actually plays off of my double proxy very, very well. Um... So as soon as I go for double proxy here, the Zillion actually plays it super smart. I think he roams bottom. But the reason why I'm looking for double proxy here is because it is a Zillion versus Yasuo. I'm not super concerned if he gets CS or not. I don't think he is either, honestly. Um, I pop my ultimate for some sustain. They're pinging me in the base. And as soon as Zillion clears that wave in mid, he just he leaves and runs straight bottom. He's playing it perfectly, basically, is what he should be doing. Now, I, I eat a Karthus ultimate there, so I'm trying to be very careful and execute. Um, or, I, no, I think I go for the recall. So I try to go for the recall, and sadly, Karthus, I think he sees me over this wall here. And he, uh, I don't react fast enough, and he just snipes me. Where are you? Where are you, Karthus? There he is. Where did he come from? I was trying to, like, think, I was trying to figure that out. I was trying to see where, which, which direction he walked from to snipe me there. Because for some reason, I didn't see him on a... We had vision, but I didn't see him. Yeah, we had a ward there. Oh, Wow. He just walked through right. Wow, that is unfortunate. That's fine, whatever. So this ward was in fact a bad ward that I should actually put a little bit further up so I can see. If I saw him, I could have reacted to it in time. But no big deal. Got a double wave. We are nice and farmed up. 86 CS to Malphite's 66 CS. Looking really juicy. Got Leeching Leer as well, because we're going to be going for... Uh, oh, sorry about that. Got a Leeching Leer, because we're looking for sustain behind tower. We're going to keep being a proxy alert this game. Okay, team is fighting over here, so um, we already lost two people, so I don't even bother walking over. Karthus is zoning me anyways from going to my team, so we're just going to shove it in. Malphite's not here either. I know Malphite's over there fighting, right? So I can't I can't do much about him, which means we're just going to stay top and look for tower plates, look for proxy waves, whatever we can do to like, just maintain pressure. Got one plate there. Brock Demolish. I think I get two here, yeah. Two plates is huge for one, uh, one Malphite Roam. Demolish is giving me a lot of value this game. Demolish is great for Proxy Sanders. So right here, I'm just walking away. I don't know that Galio is coming. I, I did not know. I think, does he even gank me? No, he just recalls. I had no idea that Galio was there when I was playing this game. But looking for the fling on the cannon. Now I go around a Proxy. I don't have vision of many people, so this is kind of a risk, but I'm taking the risk because I have ultimate and I have ghost up. You never, ever want to over proxy and what i mean by over proxying is you don't want to go behind the tower when you don't have your ghost when you don't have a summoner you or when you don't have your ultimate you at least want your ultimate that's like bare minimum i think if you want to go behind tower if you don't have your ultimate don't go behind tower it's not worth it you are way too easy to kill without your ultimate so here we're proxying behind t2 and t3 i'm just i'm just gambling it right now because i'm i'm gonna assume that karthus cannot kill me if i have my ultimate up Walk into base here, looking for a double proxy. Zillion's gonna grab this wave and recall. Then we just look for the double proxy here. And because I have Leeching Leer, it's a lot easier for me to sustain as well. It gives me Omni Vamp, so. Just grab the waves. Okay, like Karthus is actually pinging me. I wanna see where Karthus was here. Okay, pop the ultimate. Alright, I see Yasuo here. He actually ignored me this game. Okay, interesting. And now I'm not walking over here again, right? Because I'm, I'm going to assume that Karthus could kill me if I walk over that direction. Then I think I... Did I see him poke his head out? I'm not sure, but I went for the execute here. Shut 
Oh no, I didn't. I actually, so I assumed that Karthus actually left and he did, so I went to poison that wave and I got most of it actually, which was really good. Um, big brain play by me, but what would he accomplish there? We kept Karthus away from our team. Malphite has to recall. I have, I'm 30 CS ahead of him. I have my full mythic item right now. I have almost 5,000 gold to his, I'm 1,000 gold ahead of this Malphite. And he has two kill participation. I have, I have zero KP. He has two KP and I'm 1k gold ahead. That's crazy. That's absolute craziness. Okay, what did I buy here? So, got the Rift Maker. I sold my potion, I think, for the Rift Maker, but it's fine. Once you have full Rift Maker, you don't really need the Tier 1 potion anymore. I saw Karthus top here when he pushed that wave into my tower, so now I know Karthus could be here, right? He's not on Dragon, which means I have to be a little bit careful if I go for, uh, go for a proxy or anything like that. But again, I'm gambling with the fact that my ultimate's almost up, so I should be fine if I go behind tower. I have both summoners as well, which is like really big. You want to use your summoners to uh, fight behind tower here. Okay, I saw Malphite get the assist on uh, Kha'Zix and he got the dragon as well, so I know Malphite's not here either. We're just looking for that, looking for that push, looking for that pressure. Okay, I see, I look at the map and I see Malphite fighting over here. So I just keep pushing tower, I get tower first blood off of Malphite's rotation. And I'm almost 50 CS ahead of him now. He has 3 KP, but I am almost I am almost 2,000 gold ahead of Malphite at this point, even though he has higher KP. So walk behind tier 2 here. I know Galia is here, Malphite's probably walking up. Now this was a bit greedy by me. What I should have done is just is just left, but I didn't. Um, because I, I, I tried to outplay it when I saw that Galia was level 6, and I wanted to try and maybe go for a kill on him. I fling uh, the I think I flung the Malphite there. I should have flung Galia, but... He, he drops super low, so I assume that I can just fight him. I have both summoners, so I'm a little bit greedy here. I should have just walked away. Um, I should have also flashed down. I could have probably made it out if I flashed down, but problem is I flashed into the uh, the Karthus AoE, and he hit me with Leandry, so I died. But um, if I played it a bit better, I could have killed that Galio. Just sadly, you know, mechanically I played it a bit wrong. Um, but the reason why I went aggro there, and I want to illustrate this, is because I had my ultimate in both summoners, and that Galio was very low level. So we got Karthus TPing down here. Does he have Spellbook? No, he has TP Smite. Okay, so he's TPing bottom. Zillion's TPing bottom. I bought a Blasting Wand and Ruby Crystal there, because I think go, do I go Demonic here? I don't remember exactly, but... Oh, rip. That's fine. The important thing is, I see if, I see eight people fighting bottom. Sorry, seven, because Kha'Zix is here. So, can't go down there, don't have my ultimate, don't have summoners, walk top, push, push, push. Pressure, 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 Malphite's not here again. I see Malphite down here, underneath my tower, they're just being really, really, really aggro. And then I think I go for tier 2 tower here. Yep, I go for tier 2 tower. Yasuo is recalling, but I think I just get tower because, you know, I'm just pressuring and proxying. Got a lot of double proxy waves this game. Okay, there's tower. So we got two towers so far. We have 173 CS. We are how much gold on top of Malphite? He is 5.8k and 7.4k. So again, I'm still almost 2,000 gold ahead of Malphite, which is like really, really good. In this case, I'm uh, 1.2k, 1.4k ahead. I'm not sure exactly what the number is, but I'm I'm quite far ahead of the Malphite. The thing that you have to be careful about though, um, when you're proxying, is you don't over proxy. Like I. I talked about it a bit before, but you don't want to just like proxy and keep proxying. Eventually, you want to join your team and start team fighting and like playing the game normally, right? Proxying is a tool that you have in the early game. You don't want to keep proxying throughout the game. You want to just use it mostly in your early game. So right here, that dragon's about to spawn, so I'm actually rotating over dragon. Because I have to use the, the item lead and gold lead that I have to help my team win. Um... Kha'Zix dies there, sadly, but I find the Karthus here, fling him into my team. Galio pops his ultimate, but I drop him super, super low. I think I just end up killing the Karthus here. Yeah, Karthus dies, which is super good. I get a big shutdown for my team. I'm I'm trying to use the lead that I have from my proxying to try and, like, create good situations for my team now. That being said, um, what did I buy after that? But I think at this point, yeah, about 17, 18 minutes is when I was when I stopped proxying and I just start to play the game normally and like join my team and just play more traditional. 
So I might cut this replay off soon enough. I think I think it illustrated pretty well how and when and why to proxy. Oh. Yeah, so right here I'm starting to play normally. I'm not gonna go into the base again because I already have two towers top. I got I got almost as much as I can possibly get out of top lane, so now I'm gonna play normally and just join my team. What fight is this right here? Here we're looking mid, see what we can do. Zaya with the aggro alt. Malphite gets stunned, so he's not he's not ulting, not yet. He gets stunned again. It's flung. Oh, he doesn't have his ultimate, he already used it. But yeah, now I'm just joining my team in team fighting. Using the uh, demonic Leand or sorry, not demonic Leandries, uh, demonic Riftmaker pressure to win fights. Malphite dies to burn. Karthus walks up here and I still kill, Kar kill the Karthus as well. Then after this, we actually turn the whole game around and just start winning, I believe, yeah. Yeah, so he dies and we just start winning after this point. Do they end up getting dragon here? I'm not sure. Oh wait, yeah. So that was actually bad. Maybe I shouldn't have walked up there for a solution, but that's not the point of this video. Not the point. Look for the dragon fight here again. Okay, dragons up. So I'm joining my team. Again, I'm just using my lead to like one zone the Karthus out and run down whoever is is like I'm able to kill. Karthus dies to poison here, and I'm just gonna go ahead, go ahead and peel off my Zaya. Well, if Yasuo was a little bit less that I would have actually one v two, one v three even, but I got two kills there. All things considered, not bad. And then I think the next. Do they get Baron here? They do get Baron. Oh no, yeah, Zillion sold this one, nice. But all, all in all, you know, it doesn't really matter what happened basically this game after 17 minutes because the point I'm trying to make is that we ended up walking down and not going into their base after I pushed tier 2 tower and just joining the team and trying to help my team get a lead and win. So this was like the game-winning team fight right here. They actually had Ocean Soul, by the way, but we ended up we ended up killing them here and getting an Elder Dragon, and then pushing for the win. So W on the Malphite, pulling him in. They all run through my anti-healing right here. Ton of healing reduce off Grievous wounds just off that fight. My team wipes them, get Elder, and then we just we just win the game. So, hope you guys enjoyed that one. Um, about 17 minutes is when I stopped proxying this game and started joining my team, because you have to like know the right situation in which to like abandon the proxy and start playing normally and playing for the win. Um, you don't just want to proxy until you lose or proxy until you win. That doesn't really work, right? People will gank you, they'll rotate to you, they'll use that lead to like get fed and then kill your team. You gotta be really careful when you proxy. You have to make sure that you're spreading your lead. You have to make sure that you're getting a lead when you're proxying and you don't, and you don't want to blind proxy and be careful when you're proxying that you're that you always have your ultimate up if you are level six or or beyond um look for the right matchups look for the right jungle matchups uh don't just int proxy make sure you're rotating to your team yada 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 um if you guys have any questions or comments just go ahead and leave them in the comments and i will answer them as best i can so i hope you guys enjoyed this one